pretty folks. Uh, let me just get my audio and stuff checked. How is everyone? I have tea. It's very hot though. Freshly made, steaming. I just realised I haven't got anything on my backdrop. Um, what I might want to do actually is run. Um, uh, what is it if I pronounce it? Oh, thanks, Laurie. Oh, he says the audio is fine. <clears throat> I can't see. Oh, where's my window gone? So how is everyone doing this evening? Oh, bear with me just one sec. Do 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 do. Apologies for that. Oh, it's a bit chilly in here tonight. We are, I've got problems with central heating. I've been filling my mat. Uh, I think I've got to change the PCB in order to solve it. Oh, where's my OBS gone? Here we go. So I've been having lots of fun there, but it gets a bit chilly in the evenings. It kind of it's very random it drives me mad actually because I can't work out exactly how to get it working when it stops working but once it starts working again it's fine for a period of time till it's turned off and then go through the cycle again very frustrating I've got a new PCB coming um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about first is not that one. No, not that one. Hold on. Right. Um, so some of you may have noticed the writing's gone a bit strange actually here. So some of you may have noticed that um, uh, that the certs, the certificates, the SSL certificates are now working again. Uh, my friend Leo's been in the server fixing stuff, which is very good, much needed. So now when you visit my storm, you shouldn't get that horrible complaint um, about um, 
this may not be safe or whatever it normally says. I can't remember what it says now. Because the certs expired. So the certs are now updating. So the forum is now um, back online as well with its certificate so we can use. However, there are issues. Um, we just cannot, and it, I say we, Leo cannot seem to get it fixed. The discourse installation. Um, it's a nightmare to maintain. So I think what I'm probably going to do moving forward is move away from Discord. Uh, discourse, sorry. And move over, move everything over to Discord. <clears throat> um, I'm also working on a new site as well, but that's going to take ages to come across. So the first thing that will probably go on that site is the documentation for the uh, for the new boards. But um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm probably going to have to um, put some messages up on the forum to let people know about that. And maybe get everyone to start moving across to Discord uh, for chat. And then for documentation and things, it's a case of just getting it written up properly, getting that converted over to the, uh, what will be the mystorm.dev. At the moment, we're using mystorm.uk, but that will migrate. All the new stuff will be on mystorm.dev when it finally gets there. Uh, I've got lots of work to do on that. Uh, I've literally only just, just begun. But as I said, what I probably put up there first will be the um, documentation that we're producing, the MD book stuff for the um, ILB, etc. And the Black Ice um, next. Oh, my tea's good tonight. I do apologise for being late, by the way. On my start, um, things just took a li little longer than I expected this evening to get done before I could move on to this. Um, so let me know your thoughts on moving away from the discourse forum, um, moving everyone over to Discord. Um, I think it's easier moving forward. Trying to run a discourse server is a nightmare. Uh, it's just been a lot of trouble. Uh, and I've got very stumped on this one. And even Leo can't seem to get it updated in a way that enables us to move forward. Best we can do at the moment. I mean, <clears throat> he did a good job of fixing the certs and stuff. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think using discourse, the forum moving forward will be um, basically phased out and then discord will be used for questions and answers, real time chat, that kind of thing, participation. And then I will try and get distilled all of the documentation stuff that we need. And that will end up on um, mystorm.dev in a way that I can easily maintain rather than the current system, which I cannot maintain, quite frankly. It's just not playing ball. Um, I also need to, I'd like to have a blog there as well, just like we've got the blog before. Let me just remind you, uh, this is the kind of blog we've got running here. This runs on Ghost. Um, and again, that's a bit tricky to operate. Um, but I'm probably just going to move to a straight uh, published HTML version. Maybe using Markdown as a background. Probably going to be easier. So um, that will be migrated in a similar fashion uh, 
I did say I was going to start this earlier in the year, but what with everything else going on, I am a little behind. Do forgive me. Um, so anything that you'd like to let me know about uh, <clears throat> the new uh, My Storm um, representation online, let me know any ideas you've got ways that we can structure things better, manage them better, document things better, please, uh, now's a really good time to let me know. I don't just mean during the stream, but, you know, let me know down on Discord as well, as I'm, you know, starting to look at building that, uh, or rebuilding that structure in a way that's um, easier to maintain. Um, the other thing I want to talk about today is the, we spent quite a bit of time, it was a good few weeks ago now, on talking about doing the retro. Let me see if I can pull up the old uh, diagram for this. Oh, it's updating. Bear with me. Let me turn my... Um, had one in order to um oh where did I put this which document was this I knew this one right let me wait for that to update before I switch over to that. Laurie no, says, has your order for the Black Ice NXT boards gone in there? Yeah, that went in. I put that in at the beginning of the week. Um, that's with JL PCB now. I have no idea how long it's going to be. Um, people are having mixed results. Ordering from Zhenzhen due to the lockdown so we just have to wait and see uh, how long I've I'll tell you what I've ordered I've ordered um, the ILB the Ice Logic bus board has the FPGA on it that's the mid plane if you like I've ordered the uh, black ice NXT mezzanine. Um, I've ordered. What have I ordered in terms of tile? I've ordered the new patch tile, which is a double tile, um, like a patch proto board that also has P mod connections on it that you can add manually. I've ordered. What else have I ordered? So I remember now the new versions of the seven segment uh, tile that went in on the order the new VGA version that went in and what's this asking me I need to agree to something here accept the license mm. It says accept the license. I think I've accepted it. Installing components. Yeah. So where was I? Yeah, so I've done seven segment. The VGA I've ordered as well. And looking through these documents now what else did I order um, BGA um, I've ordered a HDMI prototype tile and I've also ordered the the motor tile the new version of the motor tile which I made some changes to what's going on my hair tonight uh, I need to cut again. 
I think that's everything. Let me think. Seven seg, patch, VGA, HDMI, motor tile, and then you a HDMI. So it's about six tiles I think I've ordered. Six new prototype tiles. So all of that went in on one order. So uh, we will see how long that um, takes to get made. And I think the making of it will be slow. It does take slightly longer. They do warn about that. But I think the um, one of the other big problems is the actual shipping. I think that's that's the more difficult part. Everyone seems to be complaining about shipping at the moment. So, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that. I mean, obviously, I'd like them as soon as possible, but, yeah, tricky. The, um, the only change I think I made on the Black Ice NXT before I shipped was I took the audio connector off and took the RX and TX onto the um, S-Bus bins of the USB power delivery. The reason being is when I looked more deeply at the connection scheme for those audio jacks being used as a UART to the keyboards, I realized there's a massive flaw in that you're injecting five volts on the tip and the tip is nearly always used in audio applications as an input and I didn't like the idea of someone accidentally putting an audio cable in there and getting five volts delivered directly down to say a, a speaker or something um, it just struck me as rather unsafe so I had to um, take that uh, the audio jack off that because it just didn't make sense in that configuration so we'll have to do some sort of adapter cable for that. Um, I think those were the, that was the only change I can remember since our last review before I sent them off. Um, I also need a few parts, even to make up the initial set of prototypes, which is a bit annoying. I thought I had enough, but there's been some small changes in the design and there's a few things I don't have enough of, like the USB connectors. So I'm going to have to do a um, LC, LS and SL. God, I'm miles away now. LC. Now, LC LS, LC SC. <laughs> I totally lost it. I've forgotten the name of the company. Um, they're the only people I can get these um, particular USB connectors off. Um, again, they're an Asian supplier. Guess where, you know, where the lockdown is. So I've got to get those sorted as well. Um, I'm also looking at things like trying to get hold of the right standoffs and stuff. I'm having some fun with that. Um, let me see if I can get this document open now because this is updated. How do I... I can't even remember which document this was now. We have a quick look. Uh, how do I change the page document? Okay. Oh, I use the scroll button. How oh, surprising! I tell you what, 
the diagram I'm looking for is this one. So let me just turn that on so you guys can see it. Um, If you can remember this, so this is a diagram that we're working on to do with the retro configuration, which I want you to have a quick word about today. So, if you remember, we now have a configuration um, that consists of three layers. Bottom layer is the tiles, then the mid plane, which is the ice logic bus. Then we have the what used to be the mezzanine, but it now covers the entire area, which is what the black ice NXT or next is, and what the effectively what the retro board would be. So the retro board is slightly different because what we wanted to do was have a direct memory bus configuration because even though I call it a retro configuration, it's really the um, the educational configuration. What do I mean by that? Well, it uses a traditional data and address bus. So if we look at the diagram here, just to remind ourselves, we've got twenty one. We've got twenty one address lines, okay, and we've got. Uh, a 16-bit data bus. We've got some Flash and PS RAM that are directly addressable on that. That is the large storage. Uh, I've forgotten the amounts now. Was it 64 and 64, something like that? Megabits. Um, and it's an asynchronous. So we've got an right enable, output enable, lower byte, napa byte, masking on there. And we've also got a chip selection um, done by our HD739 or half of our HD739 decoder chip. So we take two two lines from the IS-40 that act as the chip selection um, sub-address, if you like. And one of the things that I was doing on here is, because I think the flash is bigger than the RAM, it's double the size, so I take, I peel off A21 and use that in combination with the chip decoder outputs in order to enable it um, and still have enough address pins to um, to address the STM32 which can act as an address bus slave. So um, I mean this was all we went through this before there's also an interrupt between the STM32 and the IS40 as well as some control pins, so the STM can over uh, can take control of the IS40, put it into reset mode, and program it with the SPI pins as well. Obviously, because we need to be able to do that. Now, my issue here, and this is an interesting conundrum. The PS RAM is about 70 nanoseconds. It's not particularly fast. Let me just double check what that is. Even though there's quite a bit of it, it's relatively slow. So it's 70. about 14 megahertz it's going to top out about 14 megahertz just over 14 15 megahertz so 
So what we were thinking of doing is doing the LCD on the STM32. Um, and that is a possibility. However, there is another alternative. What we could do is add a small amount, me, a small amount of SRAM on here. I put this, we've got enough chip selects so that we can put this into the address space. What I'm thinking here is something like uh, 64K by 16 wide or 128K bytes. A small amount of SRAM. Why would we want to add that in addition to all this SRAM, with all, all of this uh, address memory uh, that we've already got? And the reason is because we may want to do the video stuff directly or we may want to run stuff faster faster clock speeds than the old retro so the one idea i had is we use a smaller sram a 10 nanosecond or 12 nanosecond maybe sram that can be had at relatively low cost uh, which seems to be available in certain places from some minor research and address that in addition to the PS RAM and flash. That in turn can be used to do the faster bits and bobs. So where that leads us is, well, how do we then operate in the various different configurations? Um, I don't think it can be completely transparent. Say we wanted to, you know, one way of thinking about it is, say we wanted to use that fast SRAM for the frame buffer and then use the PS RAM and flash for everything else. And you may think, well, that will probably work because the SRAM is gonna be running at, you know, 80 or 100 megahertz effectively. But you'd have to be very careful because the moment you write to the PS RAM, that's only going to happen at, you know, 70 nanoseconds. So even if you had a single write, it would interrupt the S RAM reads and writes and it would slow everything down. So the question is, do you still get a real advantage if you're mixing these different speed memories? Um, and what I'm looking for here is ideas and feedbacks to as to whether that would be beneficial. I mean, if you were looking at retro, for example, you could say in certain cases of a retro example is you could probably fit it all in the P it all in the SRAM anyhow and you don't even bother accessing uh, PS RAM. That's one possibility. And in the cases where the retro is running slow enough to use the PS RAM, then it doesn't matter anyhow. You can still take advantage of the S RAM for the video stuff and that will go faster. But the fact that the other stuff is running slower it doesn't matter because you're running at a low clock speed in the first place. Um, the other thing you can do is in the cases where maybe you're um, chasing the beam, then you do all the video um, random access using SRAM. And then in the blanking periods, you access the rest of the PS RAM, uh, which I believe may be structured. Some things may be structured to enable you to do that. But I don't know enough of the details. So again, I'm looking for some feedback on that, whether that is a possibility. And then the other thing is, you know, on the more modern uh, retro, where you're writing it afresh, where you can write it intelligently enough to take advantage of the various different 
our memory type accesses. And I'd be interested in what you think, you know, what are the possibilities in those scenarios? Um, I don't know what you think, Laurie, but let me know your thoughts. Let me just, I'm just adjusting my heating here, see if I can bring it back. resetting it you know is there a hybrid way of using a memory configuration where you've got different types of memory in the address bus where you can kind of get the best of both worlds I mean could you one other way of thinking about it is the PS RAM is like main RAM that's where you know so on the modern uh, RIS 5 side your PS RAM contains all your application code uh, and anything running at any you know point in time actually runs in the SRAM so you switch it into the SRAM page or pages if you like dynamically um, so you are always doing the fast execution stuff from SRAM and the PS RAM just acts as a kind of um, very fast access to either data or um, um, the application code itself that gets switched in and out when it's loaded. Lori says, I can't think of a case where the hybrid model will work. Uh, he's still typing as well. So. But the two different alternatives would be good. So are you saying that you, it, it's one or the other? So even though they're both there, you'd only ever be using one or the other, I guess. Yeah, it's trying to think of a way of using, you know, it's a bit stiff. Using both the um, both of the memory types concurrently, or well, I mean, maybe you can interleave to a degree, but there'd have to be some structured way that you'd use that, possibly. The Atari 2600 runs application code during the blanking period, so that could that could operate, I guess, in that fashion. Possibly. But that writes the screen without using any SRAM. Just a small number of registers. The Atari 2600 had a total of 128 bytes of RAM, including the stack. Really? Seems like a very low amount. 
wasn't over a long time ago then. It's one of the very early gaming consoles, wasn't it? That's about 64 bytes of registers for writing to the screen. Yeah, so it's a very strange arrangement with the 2600. So it didn't have anything resembling a frame buffer, obviously. So it's very different in that sense. Or nothing that we recognise as a frame buffer. Or video memory for that. But I mean, adding this SRAM is a very possible scenario because it's relatively small and available and reasonably cost, reasonably costed and available. I still allow ports of NES games because it's racing the beam method was very effective. Yeah, it must look incredibly different to others. But you can't see any way that a hybrid could work. Certainly not for retro. But what about if you knew you had this, could you take advantage of it? So if you were doing, say, you know, some sort of Risk Five stuff call it a modern retro and you knew you had this hybrid memory architecture could you have a model that could take advantage of both things i.e. size and capacity on one side and speed performance on the other but on the same address bus Other retro computers interleave application RAM and video RAM. It's possible that one or more of them might work in hybrid mode depending on the exact timing. Yeah, I think retro is probably the hardest because it's not designed to use a multi-speed access would be my guess. The read-only memory, what was the speed of the read-only memory? So was it slower than the, um, the RAM at the time? if I can remember. It tends to be EEPROM and things like that, doesn't it? Or just PROM in some places. It's possible that one or more might work. Um, yeah, but I can't think of one at the moment. No, I say. So there might be some benefit, but not necessarily in the retro retro realm. So the biggest benefit would come in the retro realm of the ones that would fit in the small amount of SRAM, right? And then you just wouldn't bother using the PS RAM. I mean. One thing that you could do, of course, is have other things loaded in the PS RAM, given that you've got so much of it. And then you can page them in and out, potentially. Um, but 
but that will mean a literal copy from the PS RAM to the um, S RAM, which could only be as fast as the combined accesses, interleaved accesses. I mean, you could you could cache, you know, you could FIFO it into the ICE forty internal memory and then write it out to the S RAM. Uh, may, may save some of the toing and froing. Um, but reading the chunks would the speed of it would be determined by the speed of the PS RAM and or flash I guess but there, there might be some advantages uh, Laurie says I like the idea as long as it does not put the cost up too much yeah well one of the reasons for going for the size choice is the pricing looked good at the end of the day the pricing looked good I just figured it might be a really good thing to have on there and it's probably worth spending the extra money. I'm not 100% yet, but I am keen on the idea. Um, particularly if there was an interesting hybrid model that could be used to take advantage of it that enabled us to do things that we couldn't do before. That would be interesting. Um, Switching stuff in and out might be an interesting, um, an interesting idea. Um, One to consider, and obviously my mind's on that now, must I wait for this other stuff to come back. I figured I'd give it some thought. Here's another thought. Um, this may or may not set, make sense. At the moment, we're assuming that the retro slash educational is a board that sits on top of the current stack. We could, however, do it all on one board if we wanted to. Um, not initially. Initially I'd do it as a mezzanine and then maybe think about boiling everything down. But that would mean uh, moving away from a mid plane and tiles. It's just an idea I had. A way of, if it was any good, a way of making, reducing the cost is all. Because I'm definitely into getting the cost down where possible on this. Um, I'm also wondering about what to use on the STM front here. At the moment I'm using the same F7. I'm just wondering if I could use something else. Possibly. I was also wondering about what other things that I might be able to put on the address bus.
what else could we directly map in? I was thinking of things like, well, how would we map in the seven segment display and would that make uh, any sense? Um, trouble is you need three 8-bit latches to make that work which could start adding up in terms of chips. Or one 8-bit latch. But you'd have to constantly refresh it over the address bus. And that got me thinking, well, what else could you put into the um, address map. Oh, Twinkle, she come in. Yeah. I've been in the garden. Did I finish your supper? My heating is making a racket. Hold on. At least it's actually come on now. Bear with me just one sec. You want to go through twinkles? Excuse me, my friends. Uh, I'm just into leaving, getting the um, heating up. People in the house complaining about the temperature. And as the engineer of the house, it falls upon me to get this damn system working. As usual. Um, so yeah, I mean, what else could you memory map and what would make sense to memory map? If anything, I'm just, so if we ever went through this cost saving exercise, rather than having things tiled, would there be a way of, um, integrating it into a smaller number of boards for example so maybe two rather than two plus tiles or one even and how much of this can be applied to a lower cost system if it worked as a education project. the only reason i'm saying that is because um, the educational market is much more sensitive to price hmm. The Mr. Equivalent is their 46-pin HP I.O. bus. Oh, that looks interesting. Let's have a look. Hold on, let me get this up so that we can have a look. Yeah. Let's get that for a sec. Hold on. With me.
HPS stands for Hard Processor System. Or the arm part of Mr. The FPGA HP IO.SV file contains a HPS IO module. That talks to the Mr. Binary on the arm side. Uh, I'm just trying to get my head around how this is physically configured. Effectively memory map the SD card and USB devices. But how are they physically doing that? That's what I'm not quite sure of. Um, so I think they call this what sys HPS IO. HPS stands for hard processor system or the arm part of the MISFR FPGA, the HPS.SV system very long file contains HPS IO module that talks to the MISTER binary on the arm side. So I don't know where that bus is. Presumably this is this is working inside the um, FPGA's bus between between the FPGA and the arm. There's a it's a like a hard bus between the two. And then the software interprets it. I mean, how does it? Be nice if there was some sort of um, diagram. Let's have a look on the right hand side, see if there's anything. It's all on the same fabric in their case. So the add-ons. Oh yeah, because it's like um 
innan är på henne. Så det är de ska hon... Okej, okay. right. Hold on, so that's yes ram. I have board. Does that plug into the other side or the same socket? Um this B hub. Oh, that's fitting underneath. So how does it connect? Hmm. Oh, I see, it's just via a cable. It's just USB. Um, RTC board. So these are just connectors on the um, on the D Nano in this case. Let me see. Really? That's tiny. Crikey, they're cramming them in. Interesting, yeah. I mean, we kind of have tiles for this and log output availability. Oh, they're talking about the um, modes. Uh, okay, so yeah, it has some, some stuff in the IO space but some of it will be done inside the FPGA mapped into IO space that way I guess just like our tiles would be I'm just thinking if anything fits directly either onto the address bus let me just go back I'll show you what I mean onto the address bus here so obviously the STM32 can be mapped in there and things that it can do can be mapped into the memory map. It can interpret the uh, memory map or a small section of it. The things like the um, uh, SD card access, etc. Um, but I was wondering if any of the hardware that we would put on a tile could go into the address bus directly in order to make it more functional before we actually start adding tiles. That's really what I'm thinking of. Um, the tiles themselves can be memory mapped if needed internally, that's not a problem. Uh, just thinking whether anything will physically go on this address bus that will benefit ROM and file loading, NVRAM saving. Uh, hmm. I think we're already doing it to a degree using the STM. Uh, all I'm thinking of here uh, Laurie is can can we put something on the mezzanine at lower cost than putting it on a tile and making it inclusive. That's all I'm thinking here from a cost reduction point of view and from an integration point of view. Does something fit into the memory address bus directly, physically, rather than um, necessitate, necessitating an individual tile? Well, 
Well, if it was a seven segment tile, you basically, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, you could have a memory location. For example, the simplest way is you could have uh, an eight bit latch um, uh, or sorry, simplest way, say it's a three digit, right? You could have three eight bit latches on chip selects. Um, and then you write to them directly from the memory bus and then they, it automatically drives the, um, the seven segments. By, um, I mean, in fact, am I talking about? You don't really need uh, three latches. You only need one latch. Um, and basically, you write to that latch, and then you change the address bus, which changes the chip select. So you're changing which digit you write to. Um, so you're updating them that way, but it will stay on the last one that you changed effectively. Um, but you then require it to be updated purely by software. So, I mean, the seven segment example isn't a good example because it's not a very practical device um, for a simple address bus, unless you included the um, a counter that counted through the digit select and three latches. I don't think the seven segment's a very good answer, sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought the seven segment up. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, the kind of thing that I was thinking is, could you do a better um, display thing, for example? Could you memory map a display better? But, you know, I don't think there's any dual port RAM. That is um, easily accessible, for example. I'm just thinking what what fits into the uh, traditional address bus scheme that might be useful and would be served better on the mezzanine than on a tile. That's all I'm thinking, really. Is making a noise again. Oh, it's a rattling at the moment. Must be a loose screw. Yeah, I don't know if there is any use cases, um, to be honest, Laurie. It's just wherever anything can be saved in terms of integrating it. And whether any cost can be saved.
be honest, I think I'd be pushing it. Not sure we can squeeze anything else out. There's nothing obvious. The only obvious one would be some dual ported RAM, but I can't, I can't. I did have a look, I couldn't find that. Only anything that we can add on the mezzanine has to be a dress map, because there's no other IO pins left. I'd always say, so if we did the seven segment, would it mean getting rid of the seven segment tile and physically putting seven seg LEDs on the mezzanine? Yeah, but it wouldn't be a tile. It'd be it would actually be part of the circuit diagram of the um, the mezzanine. That's all I'm talking about here. I mean, the seven segment isn't a very good example because it doesn't work well with a memory map. I mean, you're kind of better off doing that through the FPGA on a tile or a P mod or something. Well, not a P mod because this doesn't have a P mod, but If you had something that was say a 16, 8 or 16 bit wide bus that had latches or latch data in or could easily be memory mapped, then that's the kind of thing that will fit nicely and would work better here than on the trial. Problem is that most devices need some sort of glue logic to form bus to the device protocol. Sure. I was thinking, could you, could you, for example, drive something like an 8080 or a 6800 interface from the address bus?
with only minor um, minor decoding, for example. Let me um, let's see if that works. Hold on. I mean, could you drive an LCD directly is one of the things I'm thinking about. If we look at the uh, LCD parallel, for example, See this. Hold on. Um, I can't remember when I saw this recently.
Um, oh, he sent me a link here. That's what he's saying here. Command data, right edge. D out, reset, pixel data, pixel clock. So these are the, is this the 8080 interface? Maybe it's the 68000 interface I'm thinking of. Uh, hold on. There's different modes, isn't there? I wonder if I can find one of these data sheets that might, might be in there. Maybe I'm getting mixed up with the modes. Hmm. I hate doing data sheet searches. No, that's no good. Twenty six. Hold on. So this is eighty eighty only. Hold on. Let me just see if damn it, where's my other browser? I'm sure I have one of these open at some point. Bear with me. Uh, Laurie says, in the 8-bit 8080 mode, you would only use 6 bits for the data bus. You wouldn't use the address, but you would need to support command data, reset and write pins. Perhaps these could be mapped onto existing control pins, so I suspect you could map it. And it would probably work in 16-bit data mode. Yeah, I'm just thinking, because there's two common modes that are supported by these types of... Um, controllers um, maybe they're all just 8080 yeah there is a 16 and an 8 bit um, There might be, a, you might be right there, there probably is an 18 bit. Although we can't, can't use that because we need, um, I don't, we've only got 16 bit wide bus that would make things difficult. 
Um, remind myself of the layout here. So I'm just trying to remember, so the data slash CX is really whether you're writing, is you can think of this as an internal address. Um, Where you're either writing to the internal register or you're um, writing to the uh, the the, uh, the frame buffer effectively, and then you've got a read and a write, sixteen-bit data in and out. Because don't forget, you've got an output and enable and a write enable on the bus already. So you could easily convert those into this. And then the signals for your data or command and the CS could be done through the decoder. Um, You can see where I'm coming from. What I'm thinking is, could that easily be integrated so that you can um, write directly to the LCD? with very little additional circuitry, I mean. Just killing a few more birds with one stone. Because you've got a nice wide bus and it's wider than you'd get on a tile. So it might be useful to be able to do that. Anything that's got a wider bus that has similar control signals or relatively simple control signals and I think the 8080 bus kind of does that so that's one of the things that we could look at doing so what do they call this the D and CX parallel interface here signal for command or parameter select Um, so the read and write so using rising edges so we'd have to invert those obviously we could connect the TI to the um, interrupt pin which I think we have tear or anti-tear should I say reset will go to the common reset
the IMI pins will be preset. Um, Laurie's saying, uh, we didn't use read of the 8080 LCD that I used, as it doesn't have much use with LCDs. Sure, but you, you know, you can build it in. I mean, if you're not, in the cases where you'll be using this LCD, you wouldn't be necessarily holding the frame buffer locally. So you might, there might be occasion where you want to read something off the display, change it and put it back. Then again, maybe not, I don't know. But it could work, is what I'm thinking. It could be a low cost way of adding display support. Definitely worth considering, I'm thinking. Be interesting to have a bit of a play around with that. I think it's doable. I mean, the other thing is we've got a spare um, decoder because we're only using half the decoder chip. So we could reuse the, the other half of that decoder chip to drive perhaps the um, the select and the data slash command. We'd need to invert the um, read and write signals, or at least the write if we were doing the write, because they'd be the wrong polarity, obviously. Um, and there might be some timing stuff with that but it might be kind of a low-cost way to add the LCD support in directly into the um, address bus which would be nice I think that could be advantageous. Definitely worth considering, I think. Or anything else that fits like that. Would be interesting, I think. Um, we'd have to work out a way of adding a bit more decoding. We probably want, we effectively need one more chip select, I think. I, I will have to go back and check the. Um, the address layout. See what we've got flexibility wise. We really want three select pins rather than two. Um, no, well, binary, we need a chip select of three rather than, uh, than the current two that we have configured. Maybe. 
Maybe, 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 maybe. Anyhow, so if anyone thinks of anything else on that, that front that's simple enough to integrate in, uh, now's a good time whilst I'm uh, thinking about all of this. What goes on that um, mezzanine board for the educational slash retro? Um, and it's also good from an educational point of view to be able to do something like an 8080 using a address bus because it kind of makes sense, it fits in nicely. Uh, something like that, that's why the 16 bit goes much better here than it does, you know, for the. Um, a tile. Right, okay, I mean that was all I was going to cover this evening. I know it's a bit short and sweet um, but I'm just this week you know having got the the other stuff ordered I'm just working out what I need to do next and uh, I'm, I've also been looking at things like the bill of materials and stuff like that and checking what I've got what I haven't got and I'm kind of going through all of that stuff it's a bit boring I didn't want to spend too much time talking about that on the stream um, but I do want to work out what goes on the kind of educational or retro board um, because that's the next design. Interestingly, uh, just on one other thing, on, on the tiles, the thing that's holding me up on the tiles, um, the reason I decided to go ahead and order the new version of the motor tile is I may have found somewhere that has chips I can use in stock for the motor driver. No promises at this point, but it's a definite possibility, um, which is why I went ahead and added that tile into the order as well, because I want to make sure that works. And I need to order some of those, um, those chips. Um, I'm just working out how many I can order really test them out. I have to order them in a certain quantity which is a bit annoying so if they turn out to be fakes I will have spent a reasonable amount of money on them which is annoying but I don't really have much choice. Um, Laurie says is the educational retro your next priority rather than QSPI RAM flash version? Um, yeah let's have a little conversation about that. Um, I stopped working on the QSPI version because I wanted to think about the bigger picture because I wanted to think about does that make sense what might make better sense if we had a solution based around QSPI um, RAM and flash, maybe that would be better if that one was based around a much lower cost board that was a kind of all in one board based on the ICE 40 up 5k. So in other words, what we do is we compress it down. So you'd have, so the board would have an ICE uh, 40 up 5k. It would have QSPI flash and RAM attached to it. Uh, there'll be a microcontroller, a smaller one, 
maybe a lower power one as well because we can make this maybe a bit lower power device um, attached via um, quad SPI to the FPGA that in turn would have USB we could also connect the uh, do the same thing we're doing on the black ice next by having a, you know an ESP32 uh, C3 option that connected to the microcontroller and then we could still drive uh, a pair of tiles from the UP5K so you'd only have two tiles but it would all be on one board um, and then by default we could ship a patch the the new double tile patch board which had P mods on it so you get P mod compatibility you know as an option straight off um, and I was thinking if you were going to go the QSPI route because of the small usage of pins you might be able to get away with the up 5k and you could put it all on the uh, on a smaller lower cost board um, that costs less to produce and less to populate so if you were going to go down to the QSPI then maybe go that route rather than create another mezzanine that only did that that goes with the ice logic bus so it would be like a uh, boiled down version um, possibly um, sounds a bit like an icebreaker with an SPI RAM chip piggybacks on the flash chip which Savan uses for some projects indeed except of course this would have the capability to support two tiles um, and you'd have the STM32 which you don't get with icebreaker of course and possibly the ESP optionally the ESP32 so it's a boiling down of all the other things and this could be like a you know a black ice ultra or something but it'll be a lower cost single board there'll be none of the stacking stuff the only thing that was stacked will be the tiles themselves it will be the size of two tiles effectively i mean there are some similarities with uh, icebreaker obviously but anything you're going to do with an up 5k is going to have similarities um, to something else that uses an up 5k there's a limit to what you can put on that chip but i was just thinking so you know would that be a more optimum cost wise solution so uh jury's still out on that I don't know what you think. Or we could do it as a mezzanine like we were thinking before. But what would be the advantage of that? Yeah, I've seen I've seen his Doom stuff. It's fantastic. It's really cool. Sylvian getting Doom running on that just by adding the SRAM, the QSPI RAM. Sorry, not SRAM. QRAM. I was just thinking because if you go in QSPI you could actually go down to a chip with that fewer pins that's all I'm thinking here it could be a more cost-effective solution possibly still at the idea stage I mean what do you think Laurie which way would be better doing the mezzanine with a QSPI or doing you know like the lower cost up 5k sort of version
just ideas really. I'm breaking up a lot. Oh, I do apologise. I don't know why. But yeah, I'm seeing a lot of red lining here as well for some reason. Well, if it continues, I'll probably uh, end it up in a sec. Uh, yeah, it's gone red line completely now for some reason. Hold on, let me just reset the um, Ethernet. Did that help? Yes, yeah, it seems to still be red lining, I'm afraid. Uh, we've got we're green lining now hopefully that's recovered itself let me just I'm going to put you on uh, mute for a sec because I've just got to get a refill hold on Right, we're back. And we're still green, which is good. Uh, Laurie says, I prefer the cheaper up 5k board. Yeah, I'm just thinking overall the cost. Um, when you add in all the components, and if you can cram it onto one board, then um, manufacturing cost goes down as well. And it's quite a good little integrated solution. And I haven't done an up 5k board, so it'd be kind of cool. But you'd only have two tiles, obviously. That's the difference. But that might be fine for a whole bunch of stuff, right? And those two tiles could be converted into free, free double D mods or a mix mod plus a D mod. also gives a bit more differentiation the other problem is if we go the mezzanine route with the qsbi um, that is lower cost than the hyper ram but it's not massively lower cost it doesn't reduce the overall price hugely because you're still talking about three layers 
Whereas if we can go with something like the um, up 5k, it could be literally just the main board that you put tiles on and that's it. I mean, the, um, the quad SPI could even be optional. Not the, sorry, the flash wouldn't be op optional necessarily, but the, uh, the uh, QSPI RAM might be optional. And you could use with and without perhaps. For those that don't need it, I guess, just using the internal memory. Um, that allows a lower price entry, I think. That's all I'm thinking as a possibility. It was just something I was thinking about. I'd f I was thinking about uh, Black Ice Ultra for some time based around the up 5k and I just figured maybe that would be better for from a low cost point of view because there's less to it, less boards. I don't know if we could do it on a two layer board as well, that would be kind of cool. That would save the cost further. Um, you don't always get as good signal integrity and um, power distribution on the two layer board, but that might be okay. Definitely worth thinking about, uh, but that's quite a bit further away, that one. I, th I figure we'd do the retro probably before that, although we could work on them in parallel. Um, I'd still have to source the up 5Ks. I have had a look. Um, they are, again, just like everything else, difficult to get hold of. But um, it may be possible to get some at some point in the not too distant future. Um, so it's possible. And certainly... Um, I've got enough here to do some development work with for the ones I had from Alloy. Okay, well, um, is there anything else anyone wants to bring up? Or Laurie in particular, because I know you're chatting away here. Otherwise, I will call it an evening this evening. anything else you want to ask me about or cover no I don't think there is right okay thank you for joining me this evening um, I'll be back streaming next Wednesday but I'll be down on Discord um, in the interim if you need to uh, discuss anything further ciao everyone <laughs>